Hi Year 9, uh, welcome to your first Photography Loom video. I'm going to talk you through our new project, it's our new project launch um, and the title of it is A Sense of Place and specifically for us in photography our subheading of that is going to be Nature. Now this is the project you're going to do for the first segment and section of uh, your Year 10 work. It's something that we'll be continuing after the summer holidays but I think it's the right time to give you a bit of a head start on that and you can definitely think about the tasks I'm going to set whilst you're still at home in lockdown. So we're going to start with a photographer called Carl Blossfeld and he's very very important to the archive of photographic history not least because like many other photographers of his time he photographed not for the purposes of art or fine art but actually as a more kind of scientific um, way of exploring shapes and particularly, in his case, flora and fauna. So his obsession really was photographing flowers and plants. He was never really famous uh, throughout the whole of um, really his life as a photographer. He was mainly a teacher and his photographs were well known in the capacity as learning tools. So lots of universities and schools would use his photographs as a means of showing students not photography, but plants and flowers. And you can see on the screen here um, a photograph of him, of Karl Blossfeld, and also of one of his early photographs. I'm not quite sure what sort of plant or flower that is, but something I really want you to consider in it is how he's formatted his work, how he's presented it within the frame. If we look at more examples of what he's done and think about the visual values, we see a photographer who is kind of interested in the shape in its own right, not as part of a scene, a wider scene, just looking at the details, the intense detail and quality of the surface, of the texture, of the tonality of any of these plants and flowers. We also see that he crops quite close into the head of these um, shapes and that his background is always plain. Now for us thinking about how we might recreate something that's in the style of Karl Blossfeld, it's going to be really simple to say that I want you to photograph against a plain background and I'd like you to start collecting now um, plants or flowers, seed heads, things like that from your own gardens or when you're out on a walk somewhere um, in nature. And of course the first task I'm going to set for you is to, yes, collect, but also to photograph. To be really, really methodical in the way that you lay out your work, thinking very carefully about centralising within the frame. I want you to photograph in black and white so you're not relying in any way on colour to distract the viewer. Um, and also to then present your images, and I really want four perfect, excellent quality images in a PowerPoint presentation, and I'd like you to upload that PowerPoint to Teams. So for a lot of you, you may well see me on Tuesday uh, in our Teams lesson, where I'll go through this PowerPoint again. But for those of you who don't access Teams, I would still like you to submit your work that way if you can. And if you can't submit your PowerPoint via Teams, of course, I want you to email me it. As part of your PowerPoint, those who want some stretch and challenge will, of course, um, write some annotations on your slides. You'll explain to me maybe what the, what the leaf or plant or flower is. You might also draw my attention to specific failures or successes within each photograph that you make. And if I was to give you some top tips myself or indeed if we were in school together and I was able to demonstrate how to photograph in a Karl Blossfeld style this is what I would be doing. So at home all I did was I had some some flowers some cut flowers that I had bought and they'd kind of died back a bit they weren't looking so good but I didn't chuck them away I thought I'd probably photograph these in some way or another at some point and you can see the very very unglamorous jug with the tea towel stuffed in it so that I created a completely straight stem and that's what I focused on. Now in the top tips you can see on the screen so I really want you to avoid casting any shadows. I used just regular ambient light, I didn't have any fancy lighting, 
I was just in my uh, kitchen room at home. Uh, you can see with jug the, uh, the dish towel and the flour. I pulled the, um, the jug and the flour away from the wall or from the background surface so I didn't cast any shadow. Now that's quite a good tip especially with ambient light that the further away the object you're photographing is from the background or the surface upon which it sits the less likely it is you're going to get a hard shadow you're going to get very diffused light and that's what you want um like i said i made sure that i was uh, vertical and then once i'd made my photograph even if it wasn't perfect as the first photographic form i took i could post production of course crop it down i'm filling the frame in my case, I also um, elevated contrast and I darkened it. So the photograph I made originally, it was just on my phone. I took the brightness down, I raised the contrast levels and then what I created is what you can see here. So to me, that's a pretty decent Blossfeld inspired image. I've closed down the frame, so I've cropped in close to the flower head. I've made it black and white. I've thought about the high contrast. I have um, created an image where there's really no shadow on the background. I'm looking only at the delicate nature of the shadow within the flower itself. So just to reiterate what I would expect you to do for next Tuesday, is to collect the seed and flower heads or stems or leaves. I want you to set those items against a plain background. Ideally, you set them up as I did with the jug and something to, to keep those stems completely vertical. No shadow wherever possible on the background. We want the shadows to be very, very um, dynamic and powerful on the plant or flower itself. I want you to photograph in black and white and then I want you to present a minimum of four high quality images in PowerPoint. For stretch and challenge, those of you who do want that, and I know there will be many in your class, you could also annotate each, annotate each slide. You could even men uh, mention Carl Blossfeld in your annotations. And you will either upload that PowerPoint to Teams, or if that's not realistic for you, then you can email me it directly. And I look forward to seeing the wonderful work that you are all going to produce. Good luck.